We're going to keep it really, really short. This is the slide, and after this you can go home. <laughs> so this is the problem. We've got a beetle, an ambrosia beetle, which carries with it a symbiotic fungus. It needs that, and it's called ambrosia for some curious reason. And them together kill trees in some cases. So now you can leave. <coughs> So first of all, this beetle, it's called the T-shot hole borer, as its common name and its scientific name is Eulalacea fornicatus. Um, everybody probably is interested in how it got the name fornicatus. Well, we don't know. The guy that described it was an, a German fellow in, in 1868, and um, he didn't leave any, any reasons for doing that. So the female is winged, the male is uh, wingless, and you can see how small they are. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, there's going to Okay. <laughs> All right. Um, so what is the life cycle of the beetle? Mated females born into a tree, and she creates a gallery. And you can see here the galleries, these, these lines in the tree. Um, and the galleries are placed in the region of the wood where uh, the xylem goes. So where the water transport goes from the roots to the leaves. These galleries are infected with a symbiotic fungus, the ambrosia. And in this case, it's a new species of, ambro of, of, of fusarium. We didn't know this thing before. And the beetle carries this in its mouth parts and infects the galleries. The fungus grows on the gallery walls and spreads through the tree. OK, the female lays her eggs in these galleries. The eggs hatch and the larvae feed on the fungus. New adults emerge about one month later. The sex ratio of the offspring is very female biased. Mom produces mainly daughters and a couple of sons. And the fornication takes place inside the galleries where the brothers mate with their sisters. The lifestyle, this lifestyle of mating inside, coming out as a mated female, infesting new trees, leaves very few ways to combat the beetle. It's out for a very short time, and then it goes into the tree. So how can you get it? So this is an, a, a real problem with this thing. So it was first detected in California in 2003. Since then, it was caught a couple of times by the CDFA in traps in LA County. In 2010, it caused the death of a large number of box elders along the streets in Long Beach. It wasn't recognized as a real problem until 2012, when Akif found it in a backyard avocado in Southgate, where, the, um, where it was infesting this avocado and it showed real nasty symptoms. Since then, surveys have shown that this thing is widely spread in LA County and in parts of Orange County, and it attacks many different host, host tree species. So where does this thing come from? It probably comes from Southeast Asia, possibly Africa, as we learned uh, in this meeting. Um, in Israel, they have the very same species that is causing extensive damage to avocado. <clears throat> and um, what do we know about the beetle identity? Well, morphologically, so if you look at the external uh, features, it will key out to be Eulalacea fornicatus. We've done a bunch of DNA work on this thing, and it appears that it's quite different from the thing we think is um, uh, uh, Eulalacea fornicatus. So we think it is a new species, and uh, we've suggested the common name Polyphagus shot hole borer for this particular beetle. And the official scientific name needs to still be worked out. OK, what happens? when the beetle attacks a tree. It appears to try out many different tree species. About 47% of the 110 common tree uh, species in Southern California, um, the beetle will go to, drill into it, and the outcome of that attack is that the beetle is repelled and no fungus infection takes place in 20 species. So the beetle goes there, chews on it, somehow it doesn't go in there, the, the fungus doesn't get in there, so no problem. Or the beetle drills into the tree, transmits the fungus to the tree, but does not reproduce on the tree. So it doesn't produce any new beetles on that tree. And we find that in 29 species of 
the 52. And the beetle, in the third case, the beetle is not repelled, the fungus infects the tree, and the beetle reproduces in the tree, so it's a true host. And we found at least four species of trees that are true hosts. Okay, so here you have a case where the beetle is repelled, and it's repelled because the tree uh, produces this, uh, this gum, and um, so the fungus doesn't get in, yet the tree ends up dying because it starts to leak so much. So the effort of producing all this gum is probably such that the tree still goes down. In other cases, the tree survives fine, as far as we can tell now, and it's not a problem. So, um, in case that the beetle drills into the tree, transmits the fungus to the tree, but does not produce offspring on the tree, in those cases, or where we have a fungus in the tree, but the beetle doesn't reproduce, we don't know what happens. What we do see in many cases is that you get wet spots on the bark, and the beetle has drilled into the xylem, and the xylem flows out of the tree. So, one of the questions we don't know yet is can these trees get so leaky that no more water goes from the roots to the, the top of the tree, and uh, the tree still uh, dies. Okay, what? what, four minutes, yeah. Okay, so um, what you often see in these cases too is that there's dieback of branches, so certain branches on top of the tree die. Um, and in other cases, maybe nothing will happen to these trees. We don't know much about this thing yet because we've just been working on it for about four or five months. So the beetle is not repelled, the fungus infects the tree and the um, beetle reproduces in the tree, so it's a true host, this tree. These trees suffer because they end up generally uh, dying. Initially, you see just some branch dieback and what you see here is a castor bean. Castor bean is a very good host for this beetle. Other known hosts are box elder, coast live oak, and avocado. And there's still a number of trees that we suspect may be host, but we haven't really determined it yet. Okay, so here you see a box elder. This is the end result of the infestation. Here you see an infestation going. All, all these little spots are beetle holes. If you break this thing open, you can see all the galleries inside. So box elder is one of the best hosts. Coast live oak, unfortunately, is also a very good host. And you can see the wet spots here on the bark. And um, these trees also get very heavily infested. Here is a, a branch that's cut through, and here you can see all the beetle galleries. So avocado, also a host. Here you see the symptoms where you get this leakage and these sugar volcanoes. And we know from work in Israel that avocados will, um, will go down as well. So, what is the conclusion? We've got a new invasive ambrosia beetle, which tries out many different species, roughly 50% of all tree species, and we've, we've looked at around 400, I think 300 or 400 tree species in the various uh, arboretums and the Huntington. And, um, oops. So um, some of these trees get infected with a fungus, roughly 60% of all the attacked tree species. The beetle reproduces only in 8% of the attacked tree species. Avocado, live oak, box elder, and some other species, um, castor bean. Fungus infection and beetle reproduction can cause dieback of tree branches and the death of the trees. We know little about the outcome if the tree only gets a fungal infection. And um, at this point, we don't know of any methods to control this beetle or the fungus infection once it gets into the tree. And it could become a major problem in the urban forest, commercial avocado, and in the natural forest once it gets there. And here are some people that I'd want to thank. And with that, I'm done.